Which word should replace the question mark? Is it seven? Well, if you use seven, then there are two e's in the word seven. Therefore, we have nine e's. So it doesn't work. Let's enumerate the first few options. On the left hand side, we have the candidate. On the right hand side, we have the actual number of e's in the whole sentence. One, no. Two, no. Three, no. Four. No, five. No, six. No, seven. No, eight. Yes, eight works perfectly because there is one e in the word eight. It's easy to imagine that as the word represents larger and larger numbers, this equation will never be true again. This question is a classic example of the so-called self-referential puzzle, because the puzzle refers to itself. And in this video, we are going to investigate some very interesting self-referential puzzles. The first puzzle contains three questions. Pause the video and give it a try. Unlike conventional exams, solving self-referential puzzle from the beginning to the end is usually not a good idea. For example, the first question is basically a summary statistic of other questions. Similarly, question number three can be also treated as a summary statistic. So we start solving this puzzle with question number two. If question number two is A, then question number three must be D. Question number two actually locks the answers to all questions. It is clear that question number three cannot be D. Therefore, this combination is wrong. What if question number two is B? Then question number three must be C. However, question three says there are two questions with answer B, so question one must have answer B as well. However, option B for question one means there are two correct answers A, but that's just impossible. What if question two's answer is C? Then question three must have answer B, but there is only one correct answer B. Then the only logical answer for question one is D. We see that this combination is self-consistent, and this combination is indeed the only solution to the puzzle. We can check the last combination. If question two is D, then question three must be A. You can verify that whether we choose A or B for question one, we will have a contradiction. Therefore, no. As a big fan of visualization, I started thinking of visualizing this question. Although visualization may not be an efficient way to solve the problem, but at least it can give me some intuition. It turns out that this puzzle is a perfect example for visualization. First, I map the options A, B, C, D to one, two, three, four. Then I highlight those numbers which represent options. Next, I can treat question one, two, three as x, y, z. Therefore, one combination of the options will become one point in this three D space. The nine green points represent the feasible combinations that is restricted by option one of question one, because option one says there is only one question with correct answer one. So question two and three can only take values. Two, three, and four. Therefore, totally nine combinations. The purple points represent the feasible combinations restricted by option one, question two. The feasible combinations can also be a single point. For example, option three of question three represent a single point, which is the point two, two, two. Even without considering the self-contradiction in question three. We can see that these three feasible combinations have no overlap, which means this solution is not self-consistent. Let's look at the geometry of another possible solution. Option two of question one represents the point two one one. Meanwhile, each option in question two is four dots in a row. We can see that the restriction of option two of question one is so strong. That there is no need to proceed to check the question three's options. How about the solution? What does the geometry of the solution look like? So the green points represent option four of question one. The purple points represent option three of question two. 
and the red points represent option two of question three. And we do see that they have an overlap, the orange point, which means there is a unique combination of the options such that it is self-consistent. However, if there are more than three questions, the situation becomes unmanageable very quickly. This question is the first question of a very famous self-referential puzzle. The puzzle contains 20 questions. The options in question one already create complicated feasible domains. Let's picture the feasible domains together. It cannot be A, because if it's A, it should be B. It cannot be B, because if it's B, it should be A. How about C? With information from only question one, we cannot reject the possibility that C is the answer. We can see the feasible domain for option C is somewhat a 3D structure in this 5D space. And a similar structure will emerge if we pick option D. Well, this puzzle contains 20 questions like this one. Visualizing and tracking structures in 20D space is not what normal people are good at. The Boolean satisfiable problem, SAT, is a problem of determining if a Boolean formula is satisfiable or unsatisfiable. For example, a and B are two Boolean variables, and A and B, this expression or formula, is a Boolean formula. It is satisfiable if we can find values for A and B such that the expression A and B is true. This formula is clearly satisfiable because we only need to set A equals true and B equals true. However, A and not A is not satisfiable. Whether we pick A as true or as false, this formula evaluates to false. A formula is called 2SAT if each clause contains at most two variables. Can you find A and B to satisfy this formula? Two SAT problems are not that difficult. And in fact, they are significantly simpler than three SAT problems. If you are interested, you can try to solve this 3SAT problem. And I give each clause a name, so if you are discussing in the comment section, it's easier for communication. The truth is, the 3SAT problem is NP-complete, and it is the most important NP-complete problem. We do not know whether it can be solved in polynomial time. In fact, most people believe they cannot. However, if I give you a solution and you can quickly verify whether it is correct or not. Back to our self-referential puzzles. If we treat each option of the questions as a Boolean variable, each of them can be true, which represents it is picked, or false, which means it is not picked. We can construct a very complicated Boolean formula to represent whether the solution is self-consistent. You may ask, how do we restrict that only one option of a question's options is correct? Well, that is also a clause. I linked a paper in the description, and you can see the first formula in the paper basically says, for each question, one of the options A, B, C, D, E must be true. In fact, self-referential puzzles can be modeled as a Boolean satisfiable problem, which means very likely it is NP-complete. Well, don't think NP-complete problems are all very hard. When the size of the problems are small, they can be solved fairly easily. Many classic games we know are also NP-complete, like Flow Free and Minesweeper. And finally, if you would love to challenge yourself, Professor James Prop created a 20-question self-referential puzzle, and you can find the link in the description.